Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. What power? power? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you, and here's our content information. We'll get that before you so that you can know how to reach us. Uh, we meet at 250 the Boulevard there in Eden, North Carolina. 276-340-2653 uh, is my phone number. Word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you'd like to reach me, by email, and we'd be glad to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see you. Uh, we meet at 10 o'clock on, uh, uh, we meet at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings for Bible study, 10 o'clock for worship on Sunday morning, and 7 o'clock on Thursday evenings for Bible study uh, there at the boulevard, and we hope that you will come out and visit with us. Of course, here's the content information for Martinsville and Danville, where the saints meet there, and this is how you can reach these brethren, you know, the other day we had a lady call in and she said she talked to Mark and, and uh, Micah and Eugene. And so we know people are watching. She was up in Ohio. So we know people are watching and we hope that you will take advantage of that if you are out of, out of state and uh, reach us. As a matter of fact, I think uh, uh, he wasn't out of state, but a gentleman called in just a moment ago. He's calling from Winston-Salem. So we're glad that you are watching uh, outside the the normal local area, and uh, we hope that we can be of service to you uh, anytime we can. Tonight, I want to begin by playing you some calls that came in on the buzz uh, Monday night, and uh, they were talking about the uh, legalization of marijuana and the uh, North Carolina court ruling uh, where the, the ban was overturned. And so we're going to let that kind of be a springboard for our discussion tonight, but I'm going to play you some of those. It, it's, um, I, I don't know, it's a couple minutes. But just listen to what some of the callers are saying, then we'll address uh, these things uh, as we go along. Yeah. If we legalize marijuana, what's next? I don't want you to... Okay, I hear you. you. Do you think we're going downhill? You, you called in before, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I, Right. Well, I think a lot of people are stoned right now. I, I, you know, they are. You know, and that's why I think legalizing marijuana is the answer. All right. Well, good evening, Charles. Yes. How do you think they would sell pot in Virginia? I don't know, but it would be a good thing. If it gets like, like uh, I think uh, Carl earlier said, it would be a good thing, good revenue, and it would probably help, help the city out in a good way. Right. Okay. Because I'm not against it. Hey, if they went for the first card, I got that card. Right. Good afternoon. I'm just curious. Hello. Charles, uh, those pothead knows if they kill somebody under the influence of driving a car, they can go to prison for it. Thank you. Good. 
Good afternoon. I don't think I'll ever have to Virginia. You don't? No. I hope not. Okay. You, you think Virginia will, will, will hold out? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go. Okay. Hey, John. Yeah. We already got the uh, alcohol uh, legalized. Right. They got uh, prescription drugs legalized. Yeah. To me, uh, alcohol and some of these prescription drugs is a whole lot worse than marijuana. Mm -hmm. That's what the New York Times said. Well, that's my opinion on it. Right. New York Times, agree Times agrees with it, saying that pot is um, less dangerous than alcohol. Yeah, well, that's where I see it. Hello, you on the air? Unrated. It is. It has gone to pot. We've gone to pot. <laughs> okay. What would you do to change it? <coughs> you there? This is the uh, pro tomato woman, I believe, right? Hey, Charles, how you doing? Okay. But I've been smoking pot for forty-five years, and I'm sixty years old. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks. Hey, thanks. hey I don't take the credit either. I don't, I've had five businesses. I'm retired. Okay. Yeah, uh, successful business. I smoked the whole time I was in the military. Right. You smoking now? No, I ain't smoking now. Huh? Okay. All right. Quickly. Okay, real quick. Yeah, the tomato lady, I got some advice for her. If she would be a little bit more open-minded, maybe she would catch up with the times. Ooh. All right. All right. So there's some calls. There's... I don't know, it's about half and half, I guess, where Luke wasn't keeping counts. Uh, but some of the individuals saying, well, we're not for it. It's not a, not a good thing. Some says, well, it don't bother me. Some says, I'll, I'd go out and vote for it. Now, here's my question, friends. Here's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about what is really going to help society. You know, what, what's going to really determine if, if things are right or wrong? You know, the strength of a society is the rule of law. That is, if individuals are going to adhere to a rule of law. Now, more and more, uh, the, the individuals, the citizens of a country, of this country, and even the leaders don't really care about the rule of law. They'll make laws, and then the, 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 the politicians will make laws and then turn around and break the very laws that they make. And so there is no respect for the rule of law. And when that takes place, then you have a, a drastic decline in society. Now, if the law... If the law is what a what uh, uh, the, the structure, the foundation of a society, then the law is not the concrete, and the ethics and the morals are the reinforcement still. And so, if you don't have any moral uh, moorings, uh, any any strengthening to the law that's based upon morals and ethics, then you're really going to have a really weak law. And I think that's what you're seeing with some of these laws that we have been. Uh, uh, seeing passed and then and voted down, uh, like the legalization of marijuana and the North Carolina ban on homosexual marriage being overturned. Now, we'll say more about these as we go along, but friends, think about this. What is it that even makes us have to vote on things like legalizing a drug, a mind-altering drug, and what, gives, what makes it uh, even possible or what makes it the... the uh, comes to the front that we're having to vote on whether we should ban or have a, 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 a in our legislatures, what is marriage? See, why are we even ta having to talk about this? It has to be because morals and ethics have gone so far down that now we're talking about very base, uh, vulgar, Im immoral things, and now we're legislating them, not only legislating them, but people will go to the polls and they'll vote, they'll vote against things like homosexual marriage, and then you have judges that come along and say, no, we're going to overturn that. Well, wait a minute. I thought that the will of the people is what we're talking about. See, the will of the people is what, you, what people claim when they say, well, you know, the will of the people, they want marijuana, you know, so we're going to have it because it's the will of the people. Well, the will of the people in North Carolina, here in North Carolina, voted by almost 70% to 
uh, uh, rule that marriage is defined as one man and a uh, man and a woman between a man and a woman, and yet now, well, no, the rule, the will of the people doesn't matter. So there's something very hypocritical and something that is skewered and off center about the fact that one time we said, well, the will of the people want it, and over here the will of the people want it, but you can't have it. Now, why is it that that is a problem? I submit to you. It's because the laws that are made are not grounded and rooted in true morals and ethics. Listen, the laws and morality go hand in hand. And if you have an immoral law, then you really don't have a very strong law. But if you have a law that is rooted and grounded in morals, then you will have a strong law. And thus, you will have a strong society if they will adhere to those laws. Benjamin Franklin made this statement. He said, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. Now, friends, I'll tell you this. You just look at society. You look at our society, and you will see that our nation is becoming more vicious and more corrupt and the answer to that is you have Big Brother and the government come and says, well, you know what, we need to control this. We need to rule this. We need to make sure that, you know what, we need to make sure that you are not breaking these rules. You know, you need to only have seven bullets in your gun up in, in uh, New York City. We need, wait a minute, we've got to make sure that you can't have too big of a soft drink. See that? We have to make sure that you are providing birth control to, the, to these people over here. We don't care about your religious freedoms and what, what, what you think about that. See? And so more and more you get the government coming in. Now, friends, you may want the government to dictate your life, but I'll tell you one thing. If you do, then you are asking for a very cruel master. All right? And so what we need is we need to get back to having laws that people will adhere to, laws that are enforced, to keep corruption and viciousness in check. Now think about this. Remember, we're talking about the rule of law being the, the foundation of society. But what is it? What does it say about a country that has laws, but yet people break them and there are no consequences? Well, now you're simply asking to be ruled by force. But what we're saying, friends, is there is a way to have a strong society that is founded upon morals and ethics, laws that are rooted in morals and ethics, and you will have a society that is a very polite society, that is a very caring society, that is a very pleasant society. If everyone is going to adhere to these laws and the rules that are broken, then they're dealt with speedily. They're dealt with uh, uh, swiftly, those that break the law. Now, listen, here's what you need to, need to determine then. What is going to be the basis of these laws? What's going to be the, what's going to be the foundation of these laws? Where do we get these, this, this idea of right and wrong? All right? Now, listen to what this caller said. Same show. Listen to what this caller said. Listen, I think he's going to say it again. Quickly. Okay, real quick. Yeah, the tomato lady, I got some advice for her. If she would be a little bit more open-minded, maybe she would catch up with the times. Ooh. All right. All right, so, so here's the caller saying, well, this lady, she needs to catch up with the times. Well, is that really what we're talking about? We're talking about is this just... Is this something that's right because now society is becoming more accepted of it? Is legalizing marijuana or, or legalizing homosexual marriage, is that right because society is saying, well, I think we'll accept it? Or is there a, a higher standard that needs to be considered when we're talking about these, these laws? I submit to you that it does not change that uh, uh, morals and ethics do not change with, with uh, uh, the winds of change. All right? Now, I was, going to I was going to have one more video here, and I don't think that I have it up here, so let me just see if I can find it real quick. I wanted to have it on the ready. 
Uh, now, friends, what, you had, what we need to consider then, I'm going to find this as we go. Uh, what is it then that makes a law the best law? What, what makes the law? Is, 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 the, is the system of morality and the foundation of law, is it, is it the law that governs the land? Is that really what we're talking about? What is, what is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the standard? Is it simply the law? Now listen, you have to have laws if you're going to have right and wrong. All right? In Romans chapter 4 and verse 15, Notice what Paul says, Romans 4 and verse 15. He says, because, wrath, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So if there's no law, all right, if there's no standard, <clears throat> if there's no law, then you really can't say something is right or wrong. If you legalize it, if you legalize it, then you, then you can't say, that it's wrong by that standard, okay? And that's what that's the call I was I was looking for. Uh, let me see if I can find this one. Um, the call the the gentleman is going to say, well, what we need to do is we just need to uh, 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 legalize it. All right. Well, let's just see if that's the case. Let's see if that that's the case. I think I can find it right here. Uh, yeah. All right. Still, uh, be close-minded if they want to, but uh, it's not. It's not going to change the world the way the world is progressing or whatever. And the legalization of marijuana would be the best, one of the best things that ever ever happened to the United States of America. Because if they do legalize it, there would be revenue there or whatever. And to me, I honestly believe this. If they legalize marijuana, it'll cut down on a whole lot of crime because people will be doing other things. All right, did you hear that? If you legalize marijuana, it'll cut down on crime because they'll be doing other things. Well, they'll find other crimes to commit. And just because you legalize something, have you, ch have you taken away all the problems that are going to come with it? Of course there'll be less crime because that won't, won't be a crime anymore. But my question is, my question is, is that the best thing for the society? Is making that a law, is that the best thing? We can do is simply say, well, now we're going to say that's right. So now that we've called it right, now our society is going to be better. Is that really the best standard we can use? Or is that, is that just changing with the times? Is it just a time change? Well, you know what? Marijuana at one time wasn't good for society, but now it is good for society. Friends, if something is inherently right or wrong, then society's changing or society's acceptance of that thing is not going to make a society better just because the society accepts it. See, if it's right, then it's right. And if it's wrong, it's always going to be wrong. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this call. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be on topic or not. I hope we stay on topic. You're on the word my Lord. Yes, I, I appreciate you, uh, t the t teaching you're doing tonight. It's right on hand where I talked to Mark a while ago about the government uh, getting away from the Bible and everything. I know uh, Mr. Walker, who uh, beat uh, Mr. Berger out of the, uh, the campaign, mm -hmm. he said he'd be willing to uh, make a law or, or sign a law or, or volunteer to do drug tests on himself and on our officials that are uh, representing the citizens. I think it needs to be because... The world's getting corrupt because they're getting away from the Bible. I think you're right. I think you're right. I didn't hear him say that, but I, I, I like that. I mean, I think everybody ought to be drug tested. If they're getting any, if they're in, involved in the government, you know, if they're working for us, I've, t I've, take, I've had to take drug tests for companies that I work for. So why shouldn't why shouldn't our elected officials? They work for us. Why shouldn't they take drug tests? And look, look if, if if they legalize that marijuana, what are they going to do about drug testing then? Right. No companies won't going to come on here and have people who's high on marijuana. That's right. But and it will but, be legal though. But it will be legal. It, See that? And plus, and you, you and you're going to have you're going to have irresponsible parents smoking it in the rooms with the children, and they're going to get secondhand uh, contact or whatever. It's just ludicrous. Like if people don't start, sit down and read the Bible in context, in order, it's gonna 
this this world's going to be terrible. It's, I mean, it's already turned into Cold War, and it's going to be more than cold. It's going to be a mm. lot of heat. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate your program. Appreciate your call tonight. All right. Okay. Yeah. You know that that's that's a good uh, 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 call. Made some good points there. The idea that uh, unelected officials why, why shouldn't they take drug tests? But then if they do take drug tests and this comes up, well, it's illegal. It's a legal substance. Now what are you going to do? The other day, friends, I I was talking to a, a, a gentleman that, that drives a school bus. He they had to take drug tests now. Let's say let's say you got you legalized marijuana now, and the man driving your school bus. Now he he's tested and well he he's positive he's got he's been smoking some marijuana. Well I guess that's all right it's illegal now see, now all of a sudden he's going he's going to be he's going to be a good driver because it's legal to smoke marijuana. My kid's not riding the bus. I don't want him driving driving my kid around. What about you? Oh, but see, but 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 the times are changing, so it's okay, it's okay. Children are going to be safe in the car, where someone is is high on marijuana, because now it's legal. See, now it's right, now it's safe. Oh, okay. Is that really what you want, friends? See, that's the changing. That's what changing times will do for you. That's the changing times. Now, listen. The best rule of law, friend, is God's standard. And that means that laws that are put in place must be rooted and grounded in God's principles. See? But you may say, well, why should it be? You know, why should it be? How will it improve society? Well, that's what we want to see. But first, let's look at this. Let's look at morality by society. You know, do the winds of change, do they change what's right and wrong? That's what we just talked about earlier. Is, is that really what makes things right and wrong because everybody accepts it? Homosexuality is not going to be right if 100% of the United States of America population accept it. That will not make it right. The majority does not have the power to make something right that is inherently wrong. It's not the case. It's not the case. Now, see... This is what I'm saying. Well, what, what, what if most people accept it and it's okay now? Is that, does that make it right? Does that make it right? You know, uh, I wanted to I wanted to ask someone this, I, and I wish that uh, this was a format where I had someone who uh, maybe had these opinions to ask, but I hear people say all the time, well, I don't think it's right. I myself won't think it's right, but I, I, I'm not for it. Now I was talking to Micah today, and I, and I don't remember who he said. I would uh, I would call the name if I knew who he said said this, and maybe if he's watching, maybe he'll call in and tell me uh, who the conversation was was with. Uh, because it might have been on the buzz, might have been on headliners. I, I didn't catch it, uh, and it might have been on the headliner tonight. See, I don't uh, the headliners comes on Monday night, and I don't get to watch it until uh, Thursday night. So sometimes I'm a week behind everything, but. I know he said one person made the statement, well, I'm not for legalization of marijuana, but, you know, it would be all right for the revenue. Now, that's what the caller said. The caller says, well, there'd be some revenue there. Friends, do you really want to make money on something that is inherently wrong? And if you are not for it, if you're not for it, then why are you not for it? See? Why aren't you wholeheartedly against it if you're not for it? See, it's, it's a cop-out to say, well, personally, I don't want it, but if it's okay, you know, but, but, you know, if we had it and we got a little revenue coming in, then I'd be all right with it. Really? Really? Well, what about this? Are you for prostitution? No, 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 I'm not. Well, would you be okay if your daughter did it so she'd make a little extra money? I mean, so it's profit coming in, right? You see, we're going to have a problem, friends, when we start making laws and we start trying to justify things that are sinful. Because if they're not, if these laws are not rooted and grounded in God's principles, then we are not really helping society. Now, let me ask you, what if lawmakers don't follow biblical principles? When lawmakers don't follow biblical principles, you know what's going to happen? You'll start having laws 
that will not be rooted in biblical principles. And then people don't have to follow them either. Now, the caller mentioned uh, 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 Mr. Walker saying that he would take a drug test. Hey, that would be fine with me. That would be fine with me. I, I like that idea. But what if you make a law and says, you know what? Well, uh, let's, I don't think anybody has to keep that law. Well, what good is the law? What good is the law? Listen, will leaders who believe, will leaders, listen, will leaders who believe that laws should be made or can be made that oppose biblical principles, Will they oppose laws that are against mur murder? Oh, say, no, see, murder, murder is wrong. Well, that's a biblical principle. That is a moral principle that comes from the Bible. It has to come from God. God made man in his own image. And he said early on, he said early on in, in, the, in the history of mankind <clears throat> that any man that sheds man's blood will be guilty of that man's blood. Now, Cain killed Abel, and there you have the first murder. Now, murder has always been wrong, friend. But now what if we make a law that says it's okay to commit murder? Are you going to be all right with that? You know, a lot of people that are. You know, there's a lot of Christians. There's a lot of people who claim to be Christian, and yet they will vote. They will vote for a politician from, I'm talking about from uh, local all the way to, to federal politician. They'll vote for a candidate who says, I am for the legalization of murder in the form of ab abortion. Now, people say, well, I'm, I'm against murder, but I'm for abortion. Well, you're for murder then. Well, I'm, I'm only for abortion in certain instances. Well, you're okay with murder in certain instances then. See how it works? When you start justifying and you start whittling away the, the morality that is uh, uh, grounded and rooted in biblical principles, you're not helping society. You're not helping society. And so I said, well, we're going to legalize, we're going to legalize marijuana. So we're going to make a rule that says it's okay. Is that really helping society, friend? And like one caller said, he said, well, what, what's next? Legalizing heroin? Legalizing a drug, friends, is not going to improve society. All it does, it makes it more readily available. See that? All it does is makes it more readily available. Just like making something illegal is not going to stop it, but it will if individuals are living by the rule of law, and those laws are enforced. You know why prohibition didn't work? You know why prohibition didn't work? Because biblical principles weren't followed. Now, what do you mean, James? Here's what I mean. I mean, drunkenness is a sin. But yet, the and so the principle behind prohibition, I think, was right. It was just. But the reason why it didn't work is because the people who were enforcing that law found it easier to get payoff, kickbacks, and it was more lucrative for the police to turn a blind eye, and it was more lucrative for individuals to help the, uh, the, the uh, whiskey runner, right? I don't remember the man's name now, but he built boats for the Coast Guard. And uh, he'd build he'd build these real fast boats, and the uh, uh, and the uh, uh, pro the um, the bootleggers would come to him, and they'd buy boats from him and pay him to soup up their engine so they could outrun the coast guard. Well, then he'd go back to the coast guard and say, "Hey, you know these guys got faster boats. You need some faster boats too. Let me make you a boat that's faster. Catch them." So they'd pay him to build a faster boat. Then they start catching the bootleggers. He'd go back to the bootleggers and say, hey, you need a faster boat. And so here he is, he's making money. Why? Because he didn't have the moral 
He did not have the, the, uh, uh, the integrity, if you will, to say, I am not going to facilitate the spreading of something that is illegal and detrimental to society. And friends, if you think that, that alcohol is not a detriment to society, you're blind. You're blind. It is, it is a terrible. It is, one of the, it is one of the leading causes of death on a highway, drunk drivers. Oh, that's okay. You think that's okay? Well, remind me not to get my family on the road when you're on the road, if you're okay with it. All right, you got another call? You got a word from the Lord? Praise the Lord, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine. All right. You have a question? Yes, um, uh, well, not necessarily a question, I just want to respond. Okay. Um, you know, when I think about uh, all that's going on in the world, um, Turn your TV down just a little bit so that you're not listening to okay. the TV. That's good. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. Um, you know, um, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, it says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there are, are the ways of death. And when I, when I think about that word, I, I, I see how they take the Bible out of the school and now uh, they are, you know, agree with same-sex marriages. Now with this um, legalizing marijuana, um, boy, this, this, this world is running the course right now. And, you know, I'm just so great, grateful to be saved, you know. And uh, I, I really applaud you for teaching as well as you do. Because people need to know the truth. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, and what we're trying to get people to realize is things are never going to get better until the bottom line to biblical principles are restored, even, even to a small degree. You know, but like you said, we're getting away from Bible principles. I mean, people are leaving religion because they see the hypocrisy. And the reason why there's hypocrisy in religion is because people are getting away from the Bible. You know, they're starting to do their own thing. And so the, the, the so-called churches are even looking more like the world. So yeah. there's, there's, no, there's no difference. There's no distinction between, uh, you know, the churches and the, uh, and, and the dance halls. You know, yeah. used to, you know, used to the church and, and, the, and the saloon was, was totally different. I mean, even I'm talking about generically the church, you know, the, the, the church assembly, assembly of people who are, coming together to worship God, uh, mm -hmm. th they look totally different than that group over there, you know. They're worlds yeah. apart. Now, the same people dancing on Saturday night go dance at church on Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, and no. it's getting worse, you know. They exactly have homosexuals right. playing keyboards and preaching and God, whatever gospel. There ain't no gospel. Um, it's just getting scary, man. I just thank God for his Holy Spirit, man, to, that he lives on the inside. And uh, he leads and guides me in all, right. all truth. Well, the, you know, and the yeah. thing is, that's why he gives us his word. You know, the, the psalmist said, uh, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Psalm 119, 11. And, and thy word is a light unto my feet and a, a lamp unto my path. So it's definitely God's word that we need to get back to following if we're going to get back on the right track. Where, where you, Amen. Where, let me ask, where are you calling from? Uh, Winston Hill, North Carolina. All right, all right. Well, I appreciate you watching. Appreciate you watching. All right, God bless you. All right have a good night. Bye. All right, all right. Very good call. Now, 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 let's talk about this some more, friend. Uh, when we're talking about making laws, let's talk about a politician making laws. He's not rooted. He's not grounded in biblical principles. Well, if he's not rooted and grounded in biblical principles, what do you think he's going to do when it comes to making laws? Do you think that he will make laws that are ethically and morally pure? Or is he going to be more inclined to do things that are maybe in his favor? Do you think a politician would ever lie to help his cause? Nah, nah, nah. 
course you would, friend. And 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 you know, and I think we all see that. This is a this was a uh, interesting comment that Charles made about the legalization of marijuana. Now, and if this doesn't paint the picture about where politicians are, you just stop and think about it and see if you can uh, 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 see what's being said here. I think this is very good, very good statement, a very good question. The, the thing I wonder, you, would, would it be points for politicians to come out for marijuana right now? Because not many of them are. All right, would it be points... Would it be political points for a politician to come out for marijuana? Now think about that, friend. It's not about am I going to come out for marijuana, be, uh, legalize marijuana because it's right. It's not am I going to come out for marijuana or against marijuana because it's wrong. How many politicians are actually weighing that from from uh, uh, from the standpoint, just like Charles said? Is it, do I, you know, will I get more votes if I vote for it? Or will I get more votes if I vote against it? And see, that's where our, our whole mentality has gone off, friends. It's not about, you know, how many votes can I get if I come out for this or if I come out against this. That's why you see politicians flip-flopping. You know, our own president, he flip-flopped so many times on, on homosexual marriage. And he made a visit down here in North Carolina right before the, uh, uh, before the, uh, the the proposition went on the ballot about hom uh, homosexual marriage. And even though he came out right before, right before the vote, he came out and said, I'm for it. And yet 70% of North Carolina said, no, it's wrong. You see that? Now, do you, now, do you think a politician sits there and, and weighs in the balance, well, which is going to give me more political uh, 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 credibility? You know they do, friends. Now, why would a man do that? What would make a person say, I'm going to be for this or against this, depending on how many votes I get? I'll tell you what makes him do that. It's because he's not basing his decision upon biblical principles. He's not, he's, not, he's not concerned about doing what is right. He's not, he doesn't really believe that a person would come, would, uh, he doesn't believe that a, uh, a person is better off or a society is better off by following God's rules. Now, if that's the way a politician looks at an issue, legalize marijuana or, 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 or go against the legalization of marijuana, if that's the way he determines how he's going to vote or where he's going to stand, what do you think he's going to do when it comes to his, his, his regular life or making laws? He's, he's going to say, well, what, what's, what's in it for me? Is he going to be a, a, a person or he or she going to be a person of integrity to where they'll say, well, this is wrong because it's not in the best interest of the society. Or would he turn a blind eye to something that could get national security? You know, they can compromise our national security, our, our well-being. My whole point, friends, is when we, we put people in, in, in power, not just politics, but uh, when we put people in power that are making rules that affect our lives, if they're not grounded and rooted in the Bible, we are going to suffer. We're going to suffer. Now, I, I don't know uh, about you, but <clears throat> it really troubles me when I hear a politician say, uh, you know, that you know he, he's he's vacillating. Our uh, uh, who's it? The North Carolina Attorney General. I think I have a uh, article here. Here it is. I'll get back to it. North Carolina Attorney General won't defend gay marriage ban. Now, now think about this, friends. The Attorney General, he won't defend a ban that 70% of the people in North Carolina said, this is what is right, this is what we want. 
Now, do you think he's going to defend a ban? Would he defend a ban on something then that was going to be detrimental to our society? You know, what, what makes him say, I'm not going to hold up the law? He's the attorney general. That is, he's the, he's the state, he's the, uh, the biggest policeman in the state. And he says, I, I, you know, I'm not going to defend that. Well, friends, does that, does that give you trouble uh, when it comes to, well, what, what, what else would he stand on? Or what would he stand against? Would he oppose things, if he was going to oppose things that are virtuous and righteous and moral, is he going to, uh, is he going then to be for things that are immoral and unrighteous? and unholy, and detrimental to our society. See that? Now, so, so what are they going to accept? It really makes you say, well, uh, I, think, I, think, I think he's going to accept things that are wrong. Now look, the, the Bible says, Proverbs uh, 29, verse 2, look what, look what the Bible says. When the righteous are in authority... The people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Friends, I can assure you that if you look at our, our, our country and you say, well, you know, the people that are making rules, city council, school board. I, by the way, I don't know if you saw this, um, uh, the show that, that ran here on WGSR about the, uh, the, the Common Core. Uh, I, I was actually going to use some of that on a TV show that um, I enjoyed listening to that la the lady. I don't know who the lady was. It was a lady and a man that were doing the, the presentation. But, you know, that, they, that she seemed to know her stuff, especially the woman. She seemed to know her stuff on this, on this matter. And if you don't think, if you don't think that morals and ethics are important, then you just sit back and wait till your kids and your grandkids and your great great grandkids come through a system that is that is uh, uh, where they're being taught the Common Core curriculum, and you'll say, "What in the world has happened to my kids?" Now, if you don't think morals and ethics are important, then you've got blinders on, my friend, and you're going to be you're going to be crying. Because you're actually letting wickedness prevail. You're actually letting the wickedness uh, uh, t take, uh, uh, you know, take center stage and, and, be, the, and be the king. Now listen, times change. You know, like the caller said, well, get with the times. Get with the times. Friends, I think we're with the times. And the fact is, the times are changing but we don't need them to change. We actually need them to go back further toward the Bible. The changing times do not determine what is right and what is wrong. And as I said before, if 100% of Americans accepted something, that does not make it true. And if 100% of the people are against something, that doesn't make it wrong. What makes something right and wrong is the Bible. Because, yes, times will change, but the Bible does not. Paul said, be not talked about with every wind of doctrine. See that? One thing that is constant is God's word. In 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul said, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and uh, doctrines of devils. Well, here's the time. Get with the times. Well, this is the times we're in right here. Individuals who will promote anything, any and everything that is ungodly and yet will oppose the things that are virtuous. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4 and uh, verse 2. Paul said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with our long-suffering doctrine. Notice this, for the times will come when they will not en endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall, be and shall turn away uh, their ears from the truth 
and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, yeah, we're with the times. These are the times that we're with. Getting with the times is not going to help our society, my friend. Getting with the times is not going to better our society. What's going to better our society is if the times get back to the Bible. That's what's going to help. In 2 Peter 1 and verse 3, Second Peter 1 and verse 3, Peter said, According as the divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Do you realize that God's word has been given to us to call us to virtue? Go back to that quote from Benjamin Franklin. A virtuous people, a virtuous people is what is needed to make a country strong. And virtuous people are thus individuals who are living according to the Bible standard. Morally and ethically, friend, we are so far away from the Bible. Oh, yeah, times are changing. They're not changing for the better. They're not changing for the better. You know what we're, we're getting, we're, what we're, uh, a biblical principle that we're getting away from because we're going with the times is we are actually promoting people, encouraging people to not work, to not work. Do you realize that you can get on unemployment? Now, I, I understand you pay, you pay in some unemployment. But do you realize that a person can be on unemployment for 99 weeks and there's no longer a requirement for them to find work? Do you realize that? Now, what are we doing? 99 weeks, friend. Do the math. That's almost two years. 52 weeks in a year. 100, 104 weeks in two years. So you're talking about five weeks short, five weeks short of two years. And in two years, people can get complacent and they'll be satisfied to do nothing. But the Bible says, even when we were with you, this we command you that if any should would not work, neither should he eat. You know, there was a time, it was a shame for someone not to work. It was a shame. The only, way, the only way someone could survive without work was if their family took care of them or they got help from, from the church. From, from, and I say the church, I'm using that very generically. From a religious organization. Now, there's no stigma on not working. There, there's, no, there's no, you know, you're not a pariah if you don't have a job. Because you can still get a phone from the government, you get food from the government. What else can you get from the government? You get you can get doctor's visits from the government. Not helping our society. Not helping our society at all. When we get away from biblical principles, we go down. When a country gets away from being rooted and grounding in the morals and ethics that you find in the Bible, it goes down. Now, getting with the times is not helping our society. Getting with the times is not helping our society. The problem is our, our society has got with the New York Times, but they hadn't got with the Bible. Paul said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The men of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in every good work. It's all good work. The Bible is what we need, but the Bible is what we're getting away from. And so when, when man sets up social norms and says, well, this is, this is uh, what we need, 
then we're going to have problems because if God's standard is not you, then whose will we use? I mean, if God's standard is not the one that we're going to use, then whose standard are we going to be held to? Yours? Mine? I like mine better. Mine's a whole lot better. But see, it's, it's, really, it's really not helpful for society to then be governed by individuals' own preferences. Why? Because the ones in power, they'll make the rules. They'll make the standards. And I can assure you, you don't want some man coming along and say, hey, here's the standard. you got to live by it. I, I, I don't think you do want that. I don't think you want someone to say, well, this, you can't eat this. It's bad for your health, so you can't eat it. Oh, you can't drive that car. It, it burns too much gas. You really want that? But yet, friends, you you do that when you get away from biblical principles. You actually accept someone coming in and dictating according to their own standards. Now, listen, God knows that man is partial. Look at this. In, in John 2, 24, John chapter 2, in verse 24, listen to what the Bible says that Jesus did. Jesus did not commit himself unto men because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. He knew exactly what was inside of man. Man will make partial judgments. They will choose based upon what they need. Look at this, John 7 verse 50. John 7 and verse 50. Nicodemus said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? Now, Nicodemus defended Christ. But all the rest of them, what were they doing? Oh, they already passed in judgment. See that? Th this man is leading away our disciples. We need to kill him. They said, Art thou also of Galilee? You know, you're going to defend him? Jesus knows what's in man. Friends, I don't think you want man to use their own, his own standard. Because the strongest then person is going to say, well, this is the standard we ought to use. Still missing the point. I know you don't want to see them suffer and you don't want to make them suffer. But what if someone else over here does want to make them suffer? Evil people. How, wh by, why are you calling them evil? Why are you calling them evil? Why are you calling them evil? Because they make humans suffer. They but make sir, suffer. You, can't, you can't give me a reason why making someone suffer is wrong. Yes, I can. By what standard? By my standard. I don't want okay, to that's what I'm saying, sir. Standard. That's my whole point. By what standard? By my standard. By what standard? By my standard. Uh, by my standard. It's wrong by my standard. Friends, making people suffer is not inherently wrong. Is it? Is it, in, is it inherently wrong? That is, any time someone suffers, is that, is that wrong? If you make someone suffer, is that wrong? Well, I must be evil then because I've made my children suffer. I've disciplined them. Yeah, I spanked my children. I've, I've put them on restriction where they can't have certain things. They can't go where they want to go. They can't do what they want to do. Oh, yeah, it, it's made them suffer. They suffer. Does that make it evil? Or is it bettering a society? Is it wrong to put someone in prison? That, that, I'm sure that makes them suffer. Or is it bettering a society? But whose standard are you going to use? Whose standard are you going to use? See, the winds of change, the winds of change are not the standard that we need to go by. The Bible is the standard we need to go by. Now, friends, most of you listening out there, I have to make this point, most of you listening out there are saying, you know what? That's exactly right. Our society needs to get back to the Bible. We, we, we've got all these people getting away from the Bible. We need the Bible. We need the Bible in our schools. We need the Bible back in our homes. 
I agree. I agree with every bit of that. But you know what? The very problem that we're having in society is the same problem that you'll find in churches. These churches of men have the same problem that's being that's being manifest that you see in society. They get away from the Bible and they start doing their own thing. And when you start pointing out that, when you start pointing that out about the churches, oh, James, now you done gone to meddling? You done, you done messed up? See, I, we want to do our own thing. We want to do what I want to do. Well, are you going to let people do that in society? Oh, no. But in church, when it comes to doing what God wants, we can do what we want to do. Really? So you can get away from God's standard in worship, but you can't get away from God's standard in the world? You can get away from God's standard in church services, but you can't but but you can't get away from him out here in the secular world. And all the problem, friends, that we're having in the world, I submit to you start because man has gotten away from God's standard in the church, in their religion. They do what they want to do. They dismiss God's authority. They dismiss his rules. They dismiss his laws. And that carry overs, that carries over into society. The saying is, as goes the pulpit, so goes the pew. But you know what? As goes the pew, so goes the world. As goes the pulpit, so goes the pew. As, the, as goes the pew, so goes the population. Friends, we can't be being tossed by the winds of change unless we're going to change and get back to the Bible. Friends, I'm out of time. I've just got a few, uh, a few seconds remaining. So what I want to do is I'm going to put my contact information up here. And if we can assist you and, and help you in any way, we want to do that very thing. Two, 50 the Boulevard before we meet. You can reach me at 276-340-2653 or wordmylord at gmail.com. Friends, don't get with the times. Get with the Bible. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. North Carolina. It's a cloudy Thursday. We have 79 degrees at our studios in downtown Reedsville. It hasn't been the best day as far as being outside to do some outdoor activities. If you were looking for sunshine, maybe I should word it that way. If you were looking for sunshine, you didn't find it today. There was none to be had, but it was cool. It was nice out there. No humidity really to speak of. Matt Smith is standing by. He's got to look at our forecast that's coming up in just a little bit and he'll let us know what we can expect. After all, there's one more work day in this week and then the weekend will finally be here. So Matt will give us an update on what we can expect for the weekend. We do have a lot of news from across North Carolina and Southside Virginia. Greensboro City officials are right now investigating a case where a man ran out of some woods he laid down on some railroad tracks in front of a locomotive. That didn't work out well at all. The man died. No information as of yet on his identity, but we can tell you what has been released by Greensboro and Norfolk Southern officials about that that's coming up in just a little bit. And now we get started with uh, what's happening right here at home. Star News Zone Charles Wells joins me by telephone from our studios in Danville at WMDV 44.2. Charles covers Danville and Pennsylvania County for all three of our Star News stations. He has been busy again with more accidents. Uh, there was one reported earlier.